Oh yeah, what's up guys? It's Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I got some more heartbeat moments for you. And in this one, I want to show you Yarn Hub. This is a super, super high quality channel I came across the other day. And they feature all sorts of different war videos for the most part. But here's the thing. They do it a little differently than the average one. Now, you've probably seen lots of war videos with like old footage or with animations and with, you know, Adobe Illustrator and After Effects, etc. This one's done in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is amazing for video games, but they're using it for renders for war videos on YouTube. And this is a totally unique idea. I'd never thought of it before, but it works and it works well. So here we go. In this one, we're going to be going to Yarn Hub and this is about Captain Vladislav Raginis. And I apologize if I said that wrong because I probably did. Anyways, he commanded a defense operation in a small Polish town called Vizna. Wizna, Vizna, and uh, anyways, he had a hunt. He had 720 Polish soldiers, and he faced off against a gigantic German force, 42,000 men, 450 tanks, 108, 150 millimeter howitzers, and 58 lighter guns. And anyways, uh, the battle was. It's just, yeah, you got to watch the video. It's amazing. Let's get into it with the first moment. All right, here we go. So I am on heartbeat. If you want to follow along with me, just go to h.ki or h key as George says, and then just click on my name. And I, under my moments, you're going to see a whole bunch of moments here. I've uh, I did about 40 today, but these ones are really cool here. So let's get in here. Let's see what Vladislav Regin is and uh, his Polish defense does. So let's kick it off right at the beginning. Here we go. I'm going to click on the first moment. It's the 7th of September, 1939, just outside of the town of Wisna in Poland. Ah. Yeah, so that's a bit of an understatement. Let's let's just be blunt here. Um, <laughs> so anyways, there you go. It kicks off September 7th, 1939. Uh, let's kick, let's move forward a little bit here and let's get into some of the action. Keep in mind, this is done inside Unreal Engine. I believe this is in 5. 5.4 is the latest release. And this is just absolutely amazing. Like, I just can't believe how good this is. Anyways, let's keep going and see what happens here. Suddenly, an explosion shakes the earth. Soldiers in the trenches are rushing for the bunkers as the air fills with fire and shrapnel. Look up. Aircraft then roar overhead, dropping bombs. One of the men rushes for the phone and gives the message they've all been dreading. So those, I believe, are Stuka dive bombers. But please, uh, in the comments, if I'm incorrect in that, please uh, correct me. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on what those uh, bombers are. Here's the song. The dry brush is set alight and fires spread across the trenches. In both yeah. positions, the air becomes foul with smoke and dust. Look at that, though. Look at that render of that picture. Black and white with the correct, like with the fold up at the top left there and a little bit of creasing. Like, this is just, just ultra high quality. Big kudos to these guys. So anyways, they take their, they're taking their beatings here. And now let's skip forward a few seconds until the battle really begins. Well... The calm before the storm. Let's let's just leave it at that. Deafening explosions to the most disturbing silence. Yeah. The men at Visna lay low, not daring to expose an inch of their bodies. Outside, something else breaks the quiet. Yeah, watch out, boys. The Panzer II and tanks are out there guys so this is one of the reasons why i use the heartbeat tool uh i mean there's a uh, product placement here that lasts about 40 sec 50 seconds and while i get it you know what the, these channels need to make their money great on them for this type of you know recap type reaction type video it doesn't make sense to show it too much so let's skip forward until the tank battle here at two minutes 38 seconds <laughs> At the front, the men brace this. for what is to come. Probably thinking of that scene from Saving Private Ryan where they put the uh, C4 uh, uh, sticky bomb stuff to blow the bridge. Well, they did it here, but with dynamite, it appears. 
Aquila. Hold. Moment. Terra. In the blink of an eye, the bridge is destroyed into a million pieces. Rubble and vehicles fall and slam into the earth and water. Now, I don't know much about tanks, but I don't think they're the best at floating and swimming. So, anyways, all hell breaks loose here. But uh, let's move forward a little bit here into one of my favorite scenes in the whole thing. In fact, I like it so much, I'm going to click on a heart here, which means I'm making it a favorite. And I've entitled this, What Kind of Gun Is That? Mormit. Okay. Mormit! One more the gunshot shot. of the massive rifles washes across the battlefield and the huge bullet slams into the enemy armor. So this part, is, you know, I did some research on this and apparently there were rifles or uh, I guess it's kind of like special sniper rifles that the Polish used that could shoot bullets into tanks. Like normally, you know, a tank is pretty highly armored and they're not you're not going to be able to snipe your way into it. But this was a special... Uh, I can't remember the name of the, the gun, but uh, anyways, this is for real, so kudos to them for their accuracy, and I mean, look at this, as the explosion comes and everything's blowing apart, absolute amazing, let's, let's watch a few more seconds, and then we're going to skip forward to the tanks going over the river. They fire again and that. again with some shots bouncing, and some punching through. The tankers are thrown into disarray as the transmission of their injured brothers makes them keenly aware. The horse, by the way, is the official Polish tank in this in this video. Of the danger they're in. They fire back with their cannons, aiming at bunkers at random as they retreat under fire, escaping the Polish ambush. So they go back over the bri or back the where where they came from. Of course they're gonna come back and do some fighting, but it's interesting to see that such a small, you know, group of men can fight off such a massively overpowering force. Let's skip forward a little bit here. And uh, we're going to go looking at the anti-tank rifles howitzers. That's what I've enabled this moment. Explosions rip through the formation, sending the German they infantry come. scrambling for cover which doesn't exist, while the tanks are shaken and disoriented by the incessant detonations. A few are brutally taken out of action with a direct impact, while the rest struggle to fight under the heavy bombardment. The anti-tank right rifle riflemen continue firing through it all, damaging more enemy tanks. The bunkers continue to fire at the exposed Germans as the entire battle becomes a duel of artillery. But only one side has bunkers. The German position is completely untenable. Tanks and men are just trying to survive through the storm of shells. So there you have it. As much as the Germans had the overwhelming force, the Polish had bunkers. And uh, it's going to be hard to bust them out. So let's see how that goes. Uh, in this case, I'm going to skip forward a little bit here to bombs away. Here come the Germans. So, yeah, the Germans are coming back, and uh, they're bringing some friends. Men stuck outside die for cover as bombs rock the earth around them. The relentless bombing resuming in anger. Eventually, yeah. it subsides, and Raginis knows that can only mean one thing. The Germans fire at the defensive positions, advancing from cover to cover through the trees and grass. The Poles return fire from the bunkers and trenches, cutting down Germans left and right. But they have the numbers. They reach one of the trenches and drop in, taking cover from the bunkers as they fight off the Polish soldiers. So this is hand-to-hand -hand combat at its just nastiest. I mean, one of the ways you can bust a bunker, of course, is through, you know, dive bombers or bombers or any type of bomber, really. And then, well, you can throw uh, potato mashers or grenades in through the, uh, in through the front slit there and... Well, that's what they're doing. This is kind of like what they did in the Pacific, uh, Iwo Jima in particular. But here we go. Let's uh, skip forward a little bit here and take a look at the uh, 60 Panzer tanks that are coming. I call this one 60 Pan Panzer tanks rot row. It's 60 Panzers from the 10th Panzer Division. They unleash their guns and the shells slam into the first bunker while the Poles open fire with all they have. Yeah. Small arms do little and the few anti-tank rifles can't handle the sheer amount of vehicles as shell after shell slams into the fortified emplacements. Yeah, I, I heard stories of people going deaf and all kinds of stuff just from the impacts. But anyways, let's get going a little more here. The men in the first bunker receive the brunt of the enemy attack. Yeah, no good. With panzer shells pummeling the bunkers as men fight for their lives. Jeez. Across the main road in the opposite town, 
Captain Schmidt is facing the same impossible odds. Gunfire rains down from everywhere, and tank shells slam into the heavy concrete. Right, so this uh, moment here on the right side, you'll see here, it's called direct hit. You'll see why. More and more shells slam into the first bunker, until finally, a shell strikes right through yeah. the bunker. Look at this. Just look at how amazing this cin this looks like a cinematic. This is this isn't a video game. This is a YouTube video. This is absolutely unbelievable. In the blink of an eye, the first bunker falls to complete silence. Damn. Within moments, the German infantry breaks down the door and pushes in. So the German infantry have got the first bunker, and then the next uh, one is called a fixed bayonet. Yeah, you know that it's on when when you get the command to stick your bayonet on your rifle. Yeah, it's it's uh, now or never. Here we go. Yeah. The Germans hear a war cry and men charge out of the destroyed bunker. Schmidt at the very front. Brave. The Germans try to flee. Some continuing to fire as the mad poles run through the hail of bullets. Schmidt's men furiously attack the enemies. The Germans try to fight back, but the cohesion of their line has been lost, and the Poles cut them down. With a this reminds me of that scene from We Were Soldiers. They weren't expecting this, were they? The absolute, just unbelievable bravery of these people. It's just it's unbelievable. Wiping out the squad. Wow. Schmidt can barely believe that worked. They run back to the safety of the bunker and make it almost completely unscathed. But it doesn't last for long. Right, so let's skip forward a few seconds here. The next moment that I use the heartbeat tool for is called uh, Schmidt Goes Sisu. And if you haven't seen Sisu, it's a strange movie, but uh, it's got a pretty tough dude in there. And he's kind of like from one of these countries, Finland or Iceland or something. I can't remember. And he was all sorts of scary. Here we go. Let's go to it. Schmidt Goes Sisu. Schmidt's bunker is surrounded. Schmidt opens fire with his rifle, joining one of the remaining machine guns in the defense. German after German falls. The Panzer takes notice. The tank takes aim. Yep, right out of Saving Private Ryan. You remember when uh, they shot the bell tower? Yeah, this is exactly what this reminds me of. Let's see what happens. Good idea. The shell explodes, wrecking the machine gun and firing shrapnel across the room. Schmidt, the machine gunner, and three other men are hit. Germans completely surround the complex, banging on the doors. Schmidt realizes he has no other option and surrenders. Uh, he earned his he earned his uh, he earned his stripes that day. Let me tell you. Let's skip forward now to one of the final moments at 1452, where Reginis or Reginis gives his speech, and then we'll just wrap this up. Yeah. Żołnierze, dziękuję wam za wszystko. Służyliście naszemu narodowi z honorem. Yeah. Czas złożyć broń. Keep in mind, this is actually in Polish. That's how high quality this video is. This is unbelievable. He opens the door. A line of Germans stand outside, but don't open fire. Reginis holds the door open as his men walk out one by one, sharing a look of utmost respect. Earned. The Germans throw them to the ground, but Reginis doesn't look. The last man exits, leaving Reginis on his own, and he closes the door. Yeah, this is rough. Moments later, the men hear a grenade go off inside. So there you have it, guys. This is an absolutely unbelievably high-quality video. This is the kind of stuff that the Heartbeat Tool was made for. I hope, you know, in the future that people see this and they go check out their channel. This is incredible stuff. Thanks for watching.